Good evening, Robert Scribbler. It is August 17th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I'm going to provide you with our weekly update on Arctic sea ice. And I'd just like to note that the present situation involves some warm winds running in through the Laptev and East Siberian Sea in conjunction with a warm front that is occluding much of the view of sea ice over the region. Would like to note that these winds have tended to thin the ice in the region of the East Siberian Sea. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on a section of the ice that appears through the clouds today so that you can get a comparison with past days and look at the ice movement and dispersion in this zone here. I'm just going to go ahead and center it on the map and we're going to run this back to August, 13, uh, August 12th. So you can see that the ice is already relatively dispersed here, but as the winds start to run in from the south, you get movement of the ice toward the north. And then on the next pass, you get quite a bit of cloud cover as well as the following pass, although you can see the ice really starting to open up in a new number of regions with large open areas appearing in the ice through the regions that you can see through the cloud cover. And quite a bit of occlusion from clouds on the 16th and then today. So I'm just going to back this up really quick and then move this forward really quick so you can see how the ice has dispersed. Overall, this dispersion in the East Siberian Sea and recession of ice in the Laptev Sea have tended to drive sea ice levels lower, even as regions of the Beaufort Sea have tended to thin out steadily over recent days. Now, just looking at the sh satellite shot, I'd like to note that there are still large fires burning in Siberia and running up toward the Arctic Circle, as well as in British Columbia. And these northern fires are a signal of human-caused climate change in that Arctic wildfires and high-latitude wildfires have tended to become more frequent during recent years and tended to move north as thunderstorm activity and warmer-than-normal temperatures have invaded the Arctic edge zones. Now, just to give us a historical reference, this graphic by Zachary Labe shows where we are presently when it comes to sea ice extent. And this from JAXA, or the, um, which is a Japanese monitor of sea ice. And what we see is that the present sea ice extent is lower than the average end season sea ice extent where sea ice reaches its lowest point from the 1980s, from the 1990s, and from the 2000s, showing that 2018 continues to show an inexorable decline, which is a trend that has been established over multiple decades and has been driven by human-caused climate change. Looking at the JAXA measure, we find that today's sea ice totals, and I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on this and add all the other years since 2000 so that we can get a reference as to where we are today in sea ice extent. And I'm just going to go ahead and zoom in closer so we can get a, get a better view of it. So it looks like, like today's sea ice extent is fifth lowest on record and running about, let's see, about 600,000 square kilometers above the record low set in 2012 for the day, and about, three, 0.3 million square kilometers below the 1980s average. So a very high departure from past years showing a continued trend of loss. It's also worth noting that 
I'm just going to look at CI's concentration in the Jack Jackson monitor because we seem to have lost Uni Bremen. I, 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 I prefer the University of Bremen monitor, but, but this monitor is good. And so CI's concentration shows thinning in the region of the East Siberian Sea as well as the Beaufort Sea. And over coming days, we should see this, this thinning continue as a strong high pressure system builds in over the Beaufort. A strong low pressure system builds in over the Atlantic side near the Barents Sea. And strong winds run in through the central Arctic. Now looking at the present track, it appears that looking at historical averages as, as projections for the melt trend, we are still tracking for a range of about 4.2 to possibly 4.3 million square kilometers at the end of melt season. And this would put us solidly in the range of 2010 averages, which, which are greatly reduced, but not threaten new record averages. And at this point, it would take some really extraordinary weather in the Arctic to, to drive us down to a point where we would be threatening a new record low. But all that said, the present Arctic sea ice extent and range is in the context of losses that we have seen on a decadal scale. So I just want to talk a little bit about sea surface temperature anomalies and, and just provide an overview. Sea surface temperature anomalies in the lap have sea have been extraordinary. And any strong wind events pushing these warm seawaters into the ice will likely tend to cause the ice edge to dramatically reduce. It's also worth noting that sea surface temperatures are warmer than normal in the Chukchi and Beaufort Sea for the most part, but that these ranges are not to the extent that we would expect a, a severe threat to the, the ice edge in the Beaufort Sea, although thinning is likely to continue to occur. It's also worth noting that the Barents Sea ice edge is much warmer than normal as well, although not quite to the extent that we see in the Laptev Sea. But the Atlantic side is still uh, on a in, a in a range that is in record low and has been beaten back quite far this year. Now, looking at some some temperature and weather maps, we'll just show you that the general projections for the next ten days in the GFS model show that. Arctic, the Arctic as a whole is likely to continue to be warmer than normal. And I'm just going to accelerate this. We tend to see quite a bit of warming in Siberia and over Alaska and continuing on up in through Western North America, as well as in the high Arctic with two to four degrees Celsius above average temperatures over the 80 degree north latitude zone, which for this type of time of year would tend to help to accelerate end season melt. And the, the range for the Arctic appears to be around 0 0.5 degrees Celsius above average to around 1.4 degrees Celsius above average in this forecast. We'd also like to note that over the next four days, we are going to see, according to GFS model forecasts, a dipole in pressure anomalies occur as a strong high pressure system builds over the Beaufort Sea, and a rather strong low pressure system begins to run up from the Barents. And this dipole will tend to strengthen wind speeds in through the Laptev, which may result in that those warmer than normal waters contacting more ice. So just an update for the situation that is going on in the Arctic as it relates to human forced climate change. Thank you for joining me, and I'll be chatting with you soon.